Jesus in you. As many that received him today, he gave what? Thank you where you think you have failed in your life. That is where God will bless you. That is where God will surprise you. That is where God will elevate you. My earnest desire for this church is that nobody here will go to hell. Ruth chapter 3 verse 1. Then George read. Then Naomi, her mother in law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not speak rest? Seek rest for thee that it may be well with thee. Before you sit down, Naomi said to Ruth, Shall I not seek rest for you that it may be well with you? You are going home with rest. Yeah. You can be seated. Many a times we want to walk. Of course, the Bible says, If any man no work, make you no eat. But mark you that God is too much God. This morning I'm speaking to you and you. Rest. Give God chance to work for you in this man. Rest I'm talking about is not for you to go to bed and take your pillow and rest. That is not the kind of rest I'm talking about. If you get close to that verse, Reverend George, read it again. Ruth chapter 3 verse 1, read again. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her. Naomi, her, the mother-in-law, said unto her. My daughter. My daughter, my son, shall I not seek rest for thee? Shall I not seek rest for you? That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with you. That is the word of God. God said in his word, rest. So that it will be well with you. Rest. That it may be well with you. It's opposite of what we believe. We believe that you must work hard. If you don't work hard, you will not be blessed. That is true. But God's economy is not like that. God said, rest. I will do it for you. Rest. It is in the nature of man to struggle and struggle and struggle. But God said, Come unto me, you that labor and are heavy ready. I will give you rest. When you rest, God will walk. If you walk, God will rest. <laughs> I repeat, if you rest, God will walk. Then if you choose to walk, God will rest. That is the pattern of God. And for you to rest, it will start from your conscience. Many of you here, your conscience is not resting. You are so much worried. What are we eat? What I will put on, what I will do, what I will not do, you troubled your soul. But God, divine economy, said, Rest and see what I will do. We are talking about grace, grace, grace. Grace. 
is the key point. Grace of resting according to the will of God. Listen to me. Rest will start from your conscience. George, do you know that when God created man, he did not put conscience in man? Go and check it in the Bible. God did not put conscience. You may say, how? But you have conscience now. How come about that God did not put conscience? If I put it to you, it is not the intention of God for you to have conscience. Conscience came in when innocency disappeared. God created man and gave him innocent grace. He doesn't know anything bad. He has an innocent mind. Innocent mind and heart. Then, Satan came to man and deceived Eve. Eve obeyed the, the voice of snake and tell the husband and they ate the forbidden fruit. Church, are you hearing me? Man was living in innocence when God gave man the grace of innocence. Man was living in innocence. No sin. Conscience void of offense. They don't bother about conscience. Because they were living in life of innocence. Then you know the story, the old story. The enemy came and said to them, is it true that God said you will not eat this fruit? They say yes, we should not eat it. By the way, church, what is that fruit? What is that fruit God says they should not eat? What is the name of the fruit? Huh? The name of the fruit is what? Law. Law. L-A-W. Thou shalt not. Law. Man was not created to keep law. And man disobeyed and ate the fruit of good and evil. Then man succumbed to law. Man must then keep the law to survive. Man from that time received a conscience. If you do good, your conscience will be clear. If you, see, if you do bad, conscience will convict you. Man put himself into bondage. <laughs> it is never the will of God for us to be in bondage. A man voluntarily volunteered to be in bondage. Thou shalt not become the order of the day. And anytime you break the law of God, you are under conviction. 
And when they ate the fruit, they were under conviction. Conscience was planted in them. And they begin to hide. They ran into the bush to cover themselves. God said, where are thou, Adam? He said, I was naked. That's why we clothed ourselves with the leaves, self-righteousness. That leaf is human righteousness. It will never cover your nakedness. You just betray yourself more. When I'm speaking about law, law is good. Law is perfect. Law is holy. But law will never save anybody. Never. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I believe in keeping the law, but not under that kind of condition. Grace is more than law. It's stronger than law. When they broke the law, they were hiding. Because they were convicted. Conscience came in to convict them. You have, you have fallen. And they hid themselves. And God called them, Where are thou, Adam? He said, I heard your voice. And I discovered that I was naked. Who told you that you are naked? How do you come about knowing evil? I gave you conscience. Innocent. Void of offense. How do you come about it? Adam said, it is the woman you gave to me. Woman I gave to you, so you are blaming me to, of giving you a woman. A uh, woman, how now? God, it, it, it is a satan, it is a snake. Eh? Snake. How come about now? How, how is it? You know, ask snake anything. It costs him. But mind you, the snake was like a cow before. Very beautiful animal. He was walking with leg. God look at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the, uh, 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 the, the, the snake and say, Cause be thou. And the, the leg went in. And snake begin to eat dust. Are you hearing me? Snake began to eat dust. What is dust? Dust is dust. And your body is dust. God commanded snake to eat dust. Anything dust. And that's how we begin to be a meat in the hand of snake. God said to woman, because you, you do this, you will be under your husband. There's nothing like woman liberation. You can't, you, you, God has said it. And he said to the man, cause be the ground for your sake. With sweat, you will eat your flesh, uh, eat your meat. And from the dust that I made you, you will go back to dust. That is how we came into this kind of bondage. You know this story very well. Thou shalt not Up to today, we are still struggling for that thing. And when we preach grace, some people are saying, you are giving us permission to go and commit sin. No. We are no more under bondage of sin. Sin is not 
in your property. We are not under sin. We are under grace. Grace is a person. Is a man. If you are committing sin, you are out of order. God looking at us made a plan. And God cannot just forgive sin without sacrifice. The soul that sinned must surely die. And somebody must surely die because they are committed sin. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down. He saw man struggling. And the word of God said, Ruth. Ruth. Rest. Rest. You can do. You, there's nothing you can do than to rest. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, there is nothing you can do to go to heaven than to rest. If you are doing the work of self-righteousness, you are going nowhere. That work you think you are doing, you are doing that will take you to heaven is faulty. There is no good work you can do on your own to warrant you an entrance to heaven. All men have committed sin and come short of the glory of God. We are all guilty and mark you that the grace of innocence has been removed. Conscience is given to every one of us. We are the cause for that conscience. Anywhere you go, your conscience is following you. Drop inside the ocean, your conscience says you are committing sin. Anywhere. You can't silence the, the conscience. It's your checkmate. Your conscience condemning you, you want to silence the conscience, is very difficult. And if you die in that stage, I, 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 I fear. Only one remedy for that sin in the conscience. Nobody knows about you. You are the only one who knows it. Jesus Christ looked at the condition of man and decided to come down by himself. What the first Adam messed up, the last Adam amended it. Where, where, where would have I gone? Go. If not Jesus Christ, nobody can save you. Nobody can redeem you. Nobody can see you through. Nobody. God has sealed it. That soul that sin it shall die. You a dead soul try to save yourself. Impossible. Impossible. Adam. Where are you? That's what I'm asking you now. Are you hiding from God? Conscience is there. You can't hide from your conscience. Innocence is removed and conscience replaced. And you can't run away from conscience. That arm robber, no matter how he pretends, conscience is telling him you are arm robber. That fornicator, your conscience is telling you, you are a fornicator. Um, let me tell you, 
then I close. We are in the generation of grace. But grace doesn't warrant you to commit sin. Please open Ephesians chapter 4 for me. Then we close. Ephesians chapter 4. Read from verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor. Walking with his hands. The things which is good. That he may have to give to him that has need. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are seed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness. This is no, some people think that when they come to grace is an open door for sin. Grace is stronger than sin. And he says now some of the sins we are committing think that we are in grace. What, what do you mean by you are in grace when you are bitter? Let all of bit, bitterness. Can I, can I see people who are not bitter here? You are bitter against your brother. Nobody knows about that. You are bitter. When you hear that name, John, Peter, James, Andrew, nobody will tell you are bitter. You see, bitter. Give no place to the devil to contaminate your grace. Let no bitterness. Eh? Let no bitterness. Let no bitterness. And rot. And rot. This is how it goes. From bitterness, you enter into wrath. Rot is the dangerous area of annoyance. Rot. Some people are bitter for days and months without any reason. You are bitter against your brother for no just cause. When you hear his name, something springs up in you for no just cause. Are you in grace? Be sure. Check your position. Has Christ changed your heart and you are still in bitterness? I don't think so. You are yet to come to grace. Grace is no excuse for sin. Sin must be done away with. Bitterness. If you are not careful, bitterness will lead you into wrath. And from wrath to what? Anger. How many of you are really free from wrath and anger? When you remember that sister's name, you are full of anger. Without cause, you are wrath. You don't want to hear the name. You, want, you don't want to hear the name of that brother. Anytime you hear that name, something springs up in you. It is the seed of the enemy. A child of God going to heaven cannot tolerate that. Uproot that seed before it kills you. Don't say grace, 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 and you are living in sin. That is not grace. You are pretending. Then, after, read on. And clamor. Clamor, eh? And evil speaking. This is 
All these things must be clear in your mind. Be put away from you. Be put away from you. With all malice. With all malice. This is spiritual sanitation. Don't rejoice. If all these things are seen in you, don't rejoice. You are yet to come to slum clearance. The Holy Spirit must do the work of grace. Don't rejoice. Therefore, this morning here, I want to leave you to check yourself. Jesus' blood never loses its efficacy. We want to clean up some people. We want to clean up some people. Read. Be and be, be ye kind one to another, uh -huh. tender hearted, uh -huh. forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Do you really forgive or do you pretend? God is not deceived. You can't deceive God. Church, the end time is here with us. If you don't know, the sky can be open anytime. And the Lord Jesus will appear. What will you say if you miss the rapture? What will you say to the people you meet behind here? They will mock you. They say, every time you are in the church, every time you are prayer, every time you are, where are you now? May you not be the one that they will ask, and what of your Christianity? Don't think that it, uh, it, 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 it will not happen today. Any time from now, it will happen. You don't know the day, you don't know the time, you don't know the hour. Be ready, for the king is coming. My hand is clean. You see, I am now preaching with burden. It is not easy for me to preach. But what can I do? What can I do? I must announce the warning. Our days are numbered. What will you say if you miss rapture? What will you say? This is not the time of counting your good works. Your good works you will receive reward if you are doing good work, but not the kingdom of God. You can't go to the kingdom of God by doing good works. Good works is good, but you will receive reward for that, but not the entrance to the glorious kingdom. To the glorious kingdom, it must be grace. It is free of charge without all these things in your heart. No clamor, no bitterness, no anger, nothing. A conscience void of offense. You can say because sister A, brother B, I can I can leave that thing. <laughs> I laugh. I laugh. Do you know that if rapture happened? and you are with one sin unrepented, you won't go. If you want to, you can't fly by yourself. If there's any way for you to fly, you will come down again. And I want to tell you, who you have been hearing this sermon every, every week. If you miss rapture, it will be better for you that you are not a Christian at all. What is the need for you to be a Christian? If you miss the hope, the resurrection, the rapture, what is the need of you repenting? No need. It is better for you to go and do everything you want. And you can't miss hell. You can't. This is the time of last trumpet. I'm telling you. 
If I want to preach, I will preach. But this is announcement. Hear ye! Hear ye! Hear ye! The time is at hand. Repent! Don't take the grace of God in vain. Jesus Christ suffered that I may go to heaven. Jesus suffered that you may go to heaven. Don't hinder yourself. Remove all these things from your heart. Repent. Forgive your brother. Forgive your sister. Courage. Void. Anything they have done to you, throw it away. Let nobody hinder you from going to heaven. You will say that there, it is because of a, you are now another Adam. The woman you gave to me. You will now say, the brother you gave to me. The sister you allowed to come to church with me. He is the one. Oh man, oh woman, you are inexcusable. That soul that sinner shall die. If you call him Jesus, you call him by his name. For he will save his people from their sin. You must be sure that sin is not sleeping with you on daily basis. Don't go to bed with sin. Sin is not your brother. Sin is not your father or mother or your wife. Sin belongs to the devil. And he will lure you into hell if you continue in sin. I cry unto you, please, escape for your life. The king is coming. Finish it. I say, forgives you. Forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Finish. This chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God. Be ye therefore followers of what? God. God, not, you know, in Corinthians, Paul said, follow me as I follow. Follow me as I follow Christ. But now, go straight and follow God. Don't look at any man or woman. Follow God. Don't say because that brother is doing that, I follow him. No, that brother is not your God. Follow God as their children. This is a warning. I don't know the time you will hear the last sermon. I don't know the time you will hear the last sermon. And that will be the end. Today is the day of salvation. Now is acceptable time. On Friday, my friend, a beloved friend, was buried. He died. And he was buried. I will see him no more, unless in the kingdom. The person you see today laughing with him or her, you may not see him tomorrow. Once that person breathed in or out, that's the end. What shall it profit you when you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Noemi said to Ruth, rest. Don't struggle on your own to save yourself. Rest. It's working something for you. God is working something for you. You see, Read it again. Read that place. We close. Rest. That rest. Ruth chapter 3 verse 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, said unto her, hey, my brother, I don't know the name of your father-in-law, but I'm saying to you now, huh? Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, said unto her, my daughter, my daughter, my son, huh? shall I not seek rest for thee? Shall I not seek rest for you? 
why are you struggling by yourself trying trying and trying and trying when jesus said the work is finished uh -huh. that it may be well with them. that it may be well with you why do you want to struggle rest the work is finished by your own struggle you can make heaven jesus said it is finished the work you will do to go to heaven i finish it for you all the things required for you to go to heaven i have done it come on to me i have rest At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 at Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. These outrage, reaching out to the trouble souls. Don't miss it. CPR, Jesus Christ is Lord. God has a plan for you. A plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants. Reverend Dr. O. Isakel, the General Overseer. Reverend Dr. Mercy Isakel, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters. 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street at Jawa Estate along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs>